who has given us the opportunity to start our day with the masjid, with the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept our ibadah, our efforts. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us all the khair of this day and protect us from all types of evil. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. As we were speaking, the <coughs> importance of being there for individuals and showing the, the true colors of Iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this narration is narrated by Abu, uh, Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, and located in the Sahih of Imam Muslim rahimahullah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when a believer makes dua for another brother of his, in his absence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he orders an angel to be appointed on his head. And whatever dua he is making for his brother, the angel repeats, walaka mithlak. That may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the same. May Allah grant you the same. And this is a practice that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established amongst the congregation of Sahaba that making, having the habit of making dua for others and especially making dua for those who are going through difficult times or you have a dispute with them. Because this is a very heavy thing to do. This is a very great thing to do in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you actually go beyond your desire to well wish for the person who you do not agree with or you have a disagreement with. And this action is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This shows the sincerity of your disagreement. This is why we need to differentiate between the illness and the ill person. The person who has been affected by the disease and the individual himself. Because the disease is the one that we don't like, the individual is our own. It's, we have a family member who has got some kind of illness and he's going through a lot of pain because of that illness. You don't like his situation because of the illness, but the person, he is your own. And you wanna make sure that the illness is removed while the individual is re restored and his health has been restored. This is how a believer's reaction should be towards the vice. That vice is something that we do not agree with, but the individual is our own. Every believer is our own. Every person is our own. And this is what Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khalid bin Abdullah rahimahullah says, I went to meet my grandfather who was the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Riwayat of Musnad Ahmed. And I asked my father, my grandfather, that, oh, my grandfather, share something with me what you have heard the, from the Prophet. So my grandfather told me that once I was sitting with the Prophet, and Rasulullah asked me, that, Do I love Jannah? So I replied in the affirmative that, Ya Rasulullah, yes, I do love Jannah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ahibba li akhika ma tuhibbu li nafsik. Love for your brother what you love for yourself, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you that jannah. Allah will give you that paradise what you're looking for and what you're wishing. And this is a very uh, great statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a very bold statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That love for your brother, what you, I mean, you do dealings with other individuals the way you want people to treat you. You interact with individuals the way you want people to interact with you. You do things to individuals the way you want people to do th things towards you. When we have this concept in the entire day of ours, whoever we talk to, whoever we meet, whichever situation we go into, whoever we, whoever we are dealing with, that I am going to treat this individual 
like the way I want people to treat me. Because remember, my brothers and sisters, what goes around comes around. What goes around comes around. The way you deal with other individuals, today, because of your position, you might be able to, to give inferiority towards other individuals. But tomorrow, Allah will change the situation. And the people that you have mistreated, and the, and the people that you have dealt with in an unjust way, this situation will be done with you. And at that time, you will realize that what I have done. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us for this before we can actually go into that situation. That what you want for yourself, that's how you should treat other individuals. If you want to be treated in a respected way, if you want to be treated in a nice way, if you want to be treated in a, in a, in a dignified way, then you do the same to other individuals. And have concern for them. Separate the vice from the person who is doing the vice. Separate the illness from the ill individual. Then you will have the true colors of Islam in your heart. During the Khilafat of Umar radiallahu anhu, Ibn Kathir has mentioned this story under the ayah of Suratul uh, Surat Ghafir. Ghafir al-Dhambi wa Qabir al-Tawbi shadeed al-Iqabi dhal-Tawli la ilaha illa huwa ilayhi al-Masir. Under the commentary of this ayah, Ibn Kathir has mentioned the incident on the authority of Musnad al-Bazzar that during the Khilafat of Umar radiallahu anhu, there was this young individual who used to accompany Umar radiallahu anhu and be with him at all time. Suddenly he stopped coming. So Umar radiallahu anhu asked about this individual where he is gone. The congregant that were with him, they said, Oh Umar, this person has left. He is gone far from the religion. He is going through a lot of bad action. Is involved in a lot of bad behavior and bad action. Umar radiallahu anhu immediately got worried and he wrote this ayah on a piece of paper and he appointed a sahabi to go and deliver this to this individual. While those who were with the company of Umar, he accompanied them and he said, let's make a collective dua for our brother. Then may Allah guide him, may Allah remove this situation from him and may Allah bring him to the path. So this is a congregation that is making dua while this person has been sent to go and deliver this message. When the message is delivered, this individual reads the ayah, he understands what Umar radiallahu anhu has sent him for, and he immediately realizes his mistake, and he correctifies himself. Now there was many other ways this situation could have been done, but the vice would have stayed, and the action would have, and, and the, the individual wouldn't have been rectified. So when we worry about rectification of things, the first stage that we need to start from it's dua for the brother who has been involved in such a situation. And when we make dua for him with the sincerity of heart, Allah is going to accept. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has... Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one of the dua of an individual that is accepted in the court of Allah when he makes dua for his brother. So this is something that we need to develop. A lot of times in our differences we go through an extent of hating the person. We don't care about the action. If this action was done by another individual who we loved, then we could have given him 100 forgiveness. But this person I don't like, so I'm going to take this action and make it the worst of his, and then after that I will take care of it. This behavior, today an individual might succeed. He might get what he is trying to get out of this. But the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the real court. Allah says on that day we will bring the scale. And whatever wrong you have done, whatever vice you have done towards an individual, it will be judged according to the wrong that he has done. And if your behavior towards that individual is worse than what he has done, then at that time you will have to give your good deeds to compensate the matter. 
So are we willing to give that good deeds on the day of judgment or do we want to rectify our action in this dunya? So this is the best thing to do to, for a, another believer is to make dua for him. And the greatest part to this is when you make dua for others, Allah appoints an angel who makes dua for you and the angels dua are very accepted and highly accepted. Why? Because they don't commit sin. Your vices, your sins are the obstacles that become, uh, that, that, that stops your dua to be accepted. And when an individual doesn't have sins, his duas are accepted. So angels, they don't commit sin. That's why their duas are accepted immediately. And when Allah appoints an angel for you, who makes dua for you, when you make dua for others, this is a win-win situation. And we ask Allah to grant us the understanding, ability to practice. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength and the courage to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do and protect us from our own nafs and the temptations of shayateen. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdihi. Wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa antin astaghfiriku wa natubi ilaha.